Good afternoon everyone. This is Daniel. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I want to talk about a few problems in Islam among many. One is the rise of Quran on the Muslim. Let's call them Qom. Q O M for short. Weak hadith, authentic hadith and acceptable hadith. Weak hadith is also called da'if, authentic hadith or sound hadith is also called shahi. Good hadith or acceptable is called hasan hadith. And I will also talk about little bit about, about tafsir or exegesis which means interpretation or explanation. In, past, in the past decades, we have encountered many Muslims who reject all hadith, any hadith, including Shahi. They, they will only believe Quran only as the authority. That's it. Nothing else. In Quran, Prayer times are not described, well, they are described, but very vague. Um, it's un very unclear. Quran doesn't tell people how many times they should pray. Instead, okay, you should pray in the morning or before sunrise or sunset, something like that. But they don't really say how many times. We can read it in Surah 11, verse 114. Surah 2, verse 238. Surah 30, verse 17. Surah 17, verse 78. Surah 50, verse 39. Without hadith, so many rituals have to be abandoned or at least part of it. Hajj will be so different without hadith. This calm do not realize that Islam cannot be done without hadith. Quran is very unclear as it is and will be worse without hadith. Hadith explains why a verse came down. A tafsir explains what the surah or the verse means. Without hadith and tafsir, it's very, very hard to understand. This behind what situation behind the verse. Without hadith, nobody, nobody knows the name of Muhammad's mother which chapter came down first or even the name of the cave where Muhammad got his message first time by abandoning hadith they have to abandon tafsir and everything else including the four different school of thought in Islam like Hanbali, Hanafi, Maliki, and Shafi. Now Hadith. We, let's talk about Hadith. What are a Hadith or Hadith in singular? Hadith were supposed to be the explanation of a Quranic verse. But there's a little problem with Hadith. Sunni has six major hadith, Bukhari, Muslim, Abu Dawud, An-Nasai, At-Trimidi, and Ibn Majah. Every single one of them was from Persia. Bukhari was born in year 810. Muslim Ibn Al-Hajjaj was born in year 815. The two hadith regarded as the most authentic were written well over 200 years after the death of Muhammad. Ibn Majah was born in year 824. 
Sunan An Nasai was born in year 829. Tirmidhi was born in year 824, and Abu Dawud was born in year 817. Imagine people who were born almost 200 years after the death of Muhammad wrote books describing the circumstances surrounded Quranic verses that were revealed during Muhammad's time. And Shia Muslims, they follow different hadith, even worse, because their hadith was, were written even later. Shaykh Muhammad Tusi was born in year 995. Ibn Baba Wai was born in year 923. And Al Kulaini was born in year 864. And this hadith functioning the same as Sunni hadith. Without hadith, people will not know which chapter was revealed first. So people will have to read Quran accordingly. According to the chapters it was compiled by Zaid ibn Tabit. But we don't even know who compiled Quran without Hadith. Hadith has two parts. Matin, which is the main part, and Isnad, the chain narrators who transmitted the report. There are three classifications in Hadith, authentic, good, and weak. My question to Muslims is, why do they call those Hadith collectors stupid? Because many Muslims, even they believe in hadith, they pick and choose which hadith is authentic, which hadith is not. If the hadith sounds good, doesn't matter how weak the hadith is, the hadith will be considered as authentic and vice versa. For example, um, Abu Dawud collecting hadith and why would ha Abu Dawud put weak hadith into a book knowing the hadith is weak or Hassan? Why would they put everything in one into one book? Abu Dawud was a student, a direct student. Although he was a Shafi'i, but he was a direct student from Ahmad ibn Hanbal, the founder of Hanbali. And it's like he, di he didn't know which hadith is true or not. So he just put them into one book and the one with reference he called Shahi and he left those without reference. He should have, he could have left out the ones without reference and not putting them into the same book. And Muslims these days, they follow a book or they read a book and trusting a book, which the book is called The Science of Hadith. Even it's, even it's called science, but there's no scientific nothing at all. It, it's basically it's a book calling this person is a liar that person is not to be trusted and so on and so on the book is called Mugadimah Ibn al Salah fi Ulum al Hadith and was written in the 13th century by Abdul Rahman Ibn Uthman al al Shah Razuri or better known as Ibn Salah, Ibn Al Salah. So the book is a book about biography of a person or people who are in the Hadith. Now let's talk about Tafsir. Tafsir was composed uh, 
by many people. Uh, so many different tafsir. Let's uh, let's let's talk about Jalalain. Jalalain was composed in year 1459 by Jalal Adin Al Mahali, but he died before he completed his tafsir. So his student continue and finish the book for him. The student is called is known as Asuyuti. Al Tabari is a big name in Islam. He was a scholar, Islamic historian, and commentator of Islam. He was born in year 839. But most Sunni will prefer will prefer Ibn Kathir, who was born in year 300, 1301. Do you see the problem here? Ibn Kathir was born 669. After the death of Muhammad, everybody trying to explain what a verse, what the verse saying, or meaning, the meaning of the verse, and sometimes they contradict each other. From my perspective as a Christian, to be a Muslim without hadith or tafsir. is impossible. Muslims are so afraid of reading Quran. Most of them, they don't speak Arabic. They don't want to read the translations, but they don't understand Arabic. So reading Quran is very scary for Muslim. They are so afraid of reading Quran like cats to the water. Reading Quran or trying to understand anything from Quran is like putting together 6,236 pieces of black and white jigsaw puzzle without knowing what picture you are supposed to see at the end. And Qom is a group of people who are disappointed with Hadith and Tafsir but still trying to cling to Islam. Maybe they're afraid to lose what they think as identity. As most Muslim will mix Islam, ethnicity, and culture and blend them into his or her identity. For those who are Christians, our identity is in Christ. Our citizenship is heaven. No matter where you are and who you are, God bless you all and have a nice day.